All right. So my name is Markku Mäkelänen, and I lead global growth and operator partnerships at Facebook. And it's a pleasure to be here to give you an update on the impact we are doing with Internet.org. Facebook, for the past 11 years, has been executing a mission to make the world more open and connected. And it's a place where people connect. And it's very popular all over the world. These are the latest numbers from our third quarter. And we have been able to create a community that's pretty big. There's a number of people using the family of Facebook applications every month. Uh, on the main blue app, we have a more than 1,390,000,000 people on mobile on a monthly basis, and more than a billion users every day. We have 8 million video views per day, and on Instagram, we have more than 40 billion photos that people are sharing, increasing with 80 million photos every day and 3.5 billion likes every day. And we have more than 45 million small to medium businesses using Facebook pages. From space, the fact is clear. We all live in the same single beautiful blue planet. But when it comes to connectivity, the world is divided into two different worlds. We have the connected world, where there lives about 3 billion people, and then the unconnected world, where the most of the people live, about 4.2 billion people. There's no single coverage map for the world, but if you use Facebook access data broken down by bearer, we'll see that the world with the connectivity looks like this, with the 3G and 4G connections to Facebook. And this is the connected world. It's with the speeds that all of us enjoy the internet. And this is the unconnected world the people who live outside of the mobile broadband. It in includes 2G coverage and where people have limited or functionally no access to internet at all. And if you look at the Nordics, this is the 2G, 3G, 4G coverage maps. And you can see the Sweden leads the connectivity in 4G. The whole Nordics is a place where all of us are pretty connected unlike the rest of the world. So let's break down the numbers, uh, what it means to be unconnected. There's about 3.4 billion people out of the 4.2 unconnected people living in just 20 countries. We have about a billion people who can't read, and we have more than a billion people outside of a sufficient mobile network coverage. Better internet access means better education, better health, and better economic growth. Um, if we would connect the developing world, we would lift 160 million people out of extreme poverty, give 640 million children access to free educational resources, and every 10% increase in mobile broadband penetration would increase 4.2% of the long-term productivity. But it's not just the statistics. It's about people that we are affected by the connectivity. When people get access to internet, they also get access to their loved ones, access to opportunities, education, and healthcare, access to new jobs and ideas. And this is why we created the partnership program called Internet.org. It's the mission of Internet.org is to connect to two-thirds of the world's population that's not yet connected. We work together with technology leaders, governments, NGOs, nonprofits, sharing knowledge, creating joint projects to increase affordable and sustainable connectivity around the world. So what's stopping the people going online? If you look at the barriers, you might live in a place where there's no infrastructure, or you might not be able to afford a connectivity, or you might not know about the connectivity, what's in it for you, and why would you use one. So let's talk about the infrastructure. In rural areas, 
the cost of laying a fiber is prohibitive. For companies that want to recoup their investments, it doesn't make economical sense to lay fiber to cover the whole planet. So we need a better way to connect people that's both efficient and cost-effective. Our strategy consists of different Lego blocks. One of them is a satellite. We basically provide the blanket coverage to underserved regions of the world. Then we have a high altitude, long endurance uh, UAVs or planes that provide a lower latency, higher connection in a kind of a smaller areas. And then we have terrestrial radio technologies and, and free space optics, i.e. lasers, to connect all of these together. So we want to accelerate the state of the connectivity technologies and uh, provide a step change in the cost of connectivity. So let's talk about the satellites. Uh, to connect people in the living, uh, living in the remote regions, the traditional connectivity infrastructure is too often difficult and too expensive. So we need to have a set of new technologies like this. We are partnering with Utilsat to launch a new satellite over eastern, western, and southern Africa to provide uh, backhaul connectivity solutions to existing partners. It's under construction but it will be launched uh, late next year. The plane, we have named it Aquila, and it's a Latin word for eagle. So it's basically a carbon fiber monocoque airframe. It's super light. It's highly optimized in terms of aerodynamics, and it's covered with solar panels. So the physical challenges in a business or solution like this is, is tremendous. So we are pushing the envelope in many ways. To sustain a, a long duration of flight is, is incredibly hard. Today, the record for a UAV flight is about two weeks. So the first target for Aquila flight is three months. And to be able to sustain and operate this fleet, we need to fly in a very high altitudes. So the plane operates during the day in 90,000 feet, about three times as high as the commercial air, aircraft traffic. And during the night, it glides down to 60,000 feet. And to sustain three months or longer flight, we can't simply ship up enough fuel to the high altitude, so we need to operate it with the solar, solar energy. It's as wide as 737, but it's equal to one-third of a Prius in terms of weight. And it's made from custom carbon fiber material that's very strong. And here is Aquila in her hangar, ready to take flight. It's pretty awesome. All right. So those of you who have, you have used the Wi-Fi on a commercial airplane, you, you probably know how difficult it is to get an internet signal into a moving target on a plane. So think of it, the challenge, as taking this old school laser pointer and pointing uh, the laser beam to a dime 18 kilometers away and doing that constantly when the planes go up and down and circulate each other. So it's a tremendously difficult challenge. And um, you have to do that constantly for three months at a time, minimum. So no human can do that. So we developed a, a laser tracking system to these planes so that they can communicate with laser, laser beams. And uh, you see it in action here. Uh, with the laser backbone networking, we have it in the lab at the moment. It's using free space optics, and we are able to push through tens of gigabits per second from plane to plane, plane to down to earth. And this is about 10 times what the state of the industry is today. All right. Let's talk about the other barriers as well. So relevance is a huge barrier. And uh, if you don't know what's a megabyte or what's an internet in the first place, you won't be interested of getting and acquiring connectivity. 
a majority of the unconnected population in emerging markets have no idea about the internet. 69% of the offline population in India hasn't heard about the internet. And in South Africa, we are somewhere in the 50% range. And then we have the lack of relevant services in local languages. The third barrier is affordability. We did a global study. Uh, where we basically found out that 34% of the global population can afford to buy half a gigabyte of data per month with the local prices. If we would somehow be able to squeeze the internet to half of that, 250 megabytes, we would be able to increase the affordability curve to 50% of the global population. And further, squeezing the internet down to 100 megabytes would give 80% of the global population affordable access to it. So as you can see, by just lowering the prices, we can't create a sustainable communications ecosystem for the planet. So what are we doing with our partners to address the relevance, awareness, and affordability barrier? We have created an app called Free Basics. And this is how it looks like on Indosat Network in Indonesia. Uh, Free Basics is uh, accessible through smartphones and feature phones alike. It has several different categories of information. It, think of it as a, like a preview for the entire internet. It has information access, job listings, job skills, uh, material for financial literacy. And the idea here is to basically provide free access to information services and educate people on the value of being connected. Here's more samples from Indonesia. We have the primary school materials uh, freely accessible through the mobile network. So anybody with the primary um, school needs has free access to those materials. Uh, we have open government project. So the government of Indonesia provides all their e-services through a single free access portal through internet.org. And then we have uh, a job site for blue color, color jobs and skills. And Facebook believes in a free, open internet. And we basically opened the Free Basics Internet Org platform to all developers. So developers who abide by these three principles are welcome to join and offer the services for consumers for free. And the guidelines are that the services should promote uh, exploration of the entire internet, focus on data efficiency, and meet and be compliant on our technical specifications for the infrastructure. So let's talk about the progress so far. Through the efforts, we've been able to connect 15 million people to the internet that haven't been online before. We have more than 250 content partners in the ecosystem for free basics. And we have launched the service in 29 countries with 31 operators. Here are the flags of the launches we've done in this year. And to give you a concrete example, I would like to invite one of our content partners from Funzi, Arpa, to tell a story about Funzi. Thanks. There you go. Hello. And, uh, I'm here to talk about something that the great man Nelson Mandela said. Something, in fact, the only thing that can change the way the world works is education and learning. Now, there are two problems in today's world when it comes to education. The first one is that not everybody has access to education. The school systems are outdated. There are just not enough teachers out there to teach the population. And the other thing is the quality of education that they can access is poor. Now, since Nelson was around, the world has changed. This is the crowd outside of the St. Peter's Dome in Rome awaiting the announcement of the name of the next pope in 2005. You see one or two mobile devices in the picture. Here is the same crowd in 2013. 
you can see that mobile has changed the way our world works. You can see that the revolution that is taking place, many revolutions that are taking place are actually driven and fueled by free flow of information and knowledge and new skills and better attitudes, freedom using the mobile devices and the mobile internet. A year ago, here at Slush, Funzi was launched as a beta service. We wanted to go out with a service that would use the mobile device in such a way that it would actually enable everyone in the world to have access to quality learning. Such a way that the service is designed to be easy to use, useful in your everyday lives, and designed mobile first and mobile only. Today, I'm proud to announce that that is exactly what we were able to do. About half a year ago, we launched our minimum viable product in May, and we can prove that we actually changed the lives of the individuals who use the service through giving them access to skills and knowledge that they never previously had access to. We have developed a replicable model that produces predictable outcomes in any market that we enter using digital-only tools. Thus, having a partner as internet.org that enables us to distribute this information to billions of users at no cost radically changes the way the world could work. But yeah, you say, does it scale? Can you replicate the model? In our case, the European Union is a flood with immigrants coming from the Middle East region. We decided that we could use our service, what we had ready and shipping with verified results to change the life of these people. We could actually prove that we scale using these people as our target group. From the launch, the decision that we made, it took us a week to launch the service using official trusted information to the mobile users in Finland as an About Finland service, proving that our system actually scales into new markets at a radically faster space, pace than any other solution in the market. And then, in just a couple of weeks' time, we launched this all in Arabic. And we have now launched the world's first entrepreneurship education course in Arabic. The outcomes the results of Funzi being used in, this, in collaboration with Internet.org in this specific field across the impact gateway from the cartridge in the New York, European Union to the refugee camps in Jordan where I was visiting over the last weekend. We can actually change the lives of the asylum seekers for the better. We can make it easier for the surrounding society to integrate these new people into our everyday lives we can radically accelerate the pace at which they can be integrated into the societies. And you know what? We can save a billion euros by just doing this. That is why we, as Funzi, are proud to say that we will change the world by delivering learning to everyone who has access to a mobile device. And with people like MarcosInternet.org, we have access to everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Sapa. Amazing stuff. Cool. So connectivity and the power to share gives people a voice. As mentioned, this is part of the Facebook mission, and we can't complete our mission before everybody in the planet is connected. As Mark mentioned when he addressed the United Nations General Assembly, that by giving access to the tools, knowledge, and opportunities of the internet, we can give voice to the voiceless and power to the powerless. We also know that the internet is a vital enabler of jobs, opportunities, and the research tells us that for every 10 people we connect, one person gets a new job, and one person is lifted out from extreme poverty. Thank you. The more we connect, the better it gets. <laughs>